we have a very special guest, Senator Ron Wyden from the great state of Oregon is joining us today. Thanks for making time. I'll turn the lectern over to you. I'm really looking forward to what you have to say. Thank you very much. And my understanding is you're going to have Congress speakers all day long. Is that true? That is true. That sounds like cruel and unusual punishment for, <laughs> for a Monday. And I thought what I'd do is be very brief. And if uh, you all want to ask a question, um, we can do it. The saga of what got us the biggest investment in fighting climate change in American history really took a turn in the right direction after cap and trade went down in 2010. I was a pretty junior member of the Senate Finance Committee, <clears throat> but I figured by any calculus, I could figure out what wasn't working. And we looked at the failures of cap and trade. We looked at the failures of carbon taxes. We looked at most of the regulatory side initiatives. And we said, we're not going to get the Democrats, let alone the Republicans. And at one point, my wife, who owns the Strand Bookstore in New York City, and is very knowledgeable, saw me. She said, dear, you've just got documents practically from head to toe, and you're 6'4". I can't even move in here. When's this going to end? And I said, sweetheart, I think we got it. It almost felt like you know, the rain in Spain stays mainly on the plane, where they say they think they've got it. And she said, oh, interesting. And I got on the phone, and I said, folks, we're missing something simple and linear and understandable, and it's right in front of us. And they said, yeah, right. And I said, it's the tax code. And I looked and said, we're talking about billions of dollars that's been allocated in a way that seems foolish even by Washington, D.C. standards. And I said, for example, people like yourselves, you want certainty and predictability. The tax code gives you everything else but that. Do you all remember the tax extenders that you used to have? How many of you ever heard of a tax extender? OK. Most of energy policy was built around a year or 18-month intervals. And I always used to say that some of those extenders had a shelf life a little bit longer than a carton of eggs. And I said, we've got to redo this. And I said to my colleagues on the Finance Committee, we're going to take the tax code, all 44 provisions, and we're going to get as close to throwing it into the garbage can as we can. And we did. We did. $300 billion of clean energy tax credits under the budget assessment has now grown to about $500 billion based on private sector projections of investment. There were two bedrock principles. One was technological neutrality, which I negotiated personally with Joe Manchin. His first choice was all of the above. I said, how about if we say technological neutrality to give this a science basis? Because nobody knows what's going to be a big carbon reducer 25, 30 years from now. To his credit, he said, you bet. And then I said, there's something I'm going to have to have as the senior senator from Oregon. We have to have something that reduces carbon emissions. So what do you have in mind? And I said, let's say the more you reduce carbon emissions, the bigger your tax savings. Those are the two principles of the bill that became law. We got about 90% of what we wanted. The main thing we didn't get was transmission capability. I know many of you care about that. So that was the piece that was missing. But we're on their way. And when we walked out of the finance room, I had become chairman over the next few years. I walked out in late spring of 2021, 
and I pinched myself. And I said, did the Senate Finance Committee really do something they'd never, ever come close to doing? Which is to say, the more you reduce carbon, the bigger your tax savings. Did they ever take a science-based standard like our technological neutrality? And senators tell me about coming up to shake my hand after it was over. And they said, you looked a little dazed. And I said, I sure as hell was, because we were making a little bit of history. We still are, and I see all these young people in the crowd. This is your time, folks. This is your opportunity. We've got a new system embedded in the black letter law that really rewards innovation, rewards entrepreneurship. I see some friends that I just visited with, some very articulate young advocates who are going to help us reach underserved communities. So my wife says, whenever you're out and going through this little story, she said, I've heard it a few times, she says, you can't stop smiling. I have, yep, it's a fact. This is one of the most important things I've done in public service, and I've had the honor, opportunity to represent Oregon a while. So let's have a question or two if you have a minute. Absolutely. We've got and a microphone. Softball questions will be especially welcome. Yeah. Um, but glad to visit. Questions from the audience. Uh, Sydney, can you help with the mic? I've got one in the back. I went to school on a basketball scholarship, and I always hung out in the back because I didn't want to ask any questions or get caught not doing so. Senator, thank you. We really appreciate your efforts here and the accomplishments in IRA. Um, wanted to get your thoughts on whether transmission may it someday qualify for the investment tax credit. Well, what I've said is I'm not going to front run my colleagues, but I am all in on transmission. I mean, this is not rocket science. And I mean, if you look at the provisions that passed the Senate Finance Committee, in late spring, early summer of 2021, you'll see my vision for transmission. It's great to have the energy. What does it mean if you can't get it to somebody? So I'm all in. And I'm putting nothing off the table. And that's what I did when we started those talks with Senator Manchin in 2010. We have got to do it. In fact, the two areas that I'm now spending the most time on in terms of future policy are transmission and permitting. And I would like to do for permitting some version of the incentive-based idea that we did in the IRA. It is not identical to um, the provisions in the IRA for a variety of reasons. But there ought to be ways to give a fast track to people who are going to get us permits more quickly to clean energy. Yeah. Are, are foreign companies eligible for the Tax credits, like if an Australian company built a vanadium redox factory in... Everything in the black letter text is geared to high-skill, high-wage jobs in America. Now, you have probably seen, because there are three branches of government, that the Biden administration has tried to factor this in to some of their implementation. But... At the end of the day, this is our path to innovation in America. Describe to me a little bit more of the facts in your case, because it sounds like you have a foreign company that might want to invest in America. They just want to be foreign. I, I just like, I like the idea of vanadium redux. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. What kind of redux? But I like the idea of vanadium redux, because they have uh, utility-scale batteries, and they can uh, be substituted for a peaker generator, and they can store the uh, energy that's curtailed, that the, the can't fit on the... Well, why, why, don't, why don't you get us more information? And Alice is here. I mean, I have seen the Canadian proposal, and what I can't really get my arms around, because I think the intent is uh, a good one, I can't really get my arms around how many jobs in Canada and how many jobs elsewhere and all of those related kinds of issues. But if you think that this is a model that can incent the kind of spirit of what we were trying to do here, I'm interested. Okay? That's Alice. That's Sydney. I, I kid everybody. Call them nights and weekends. Take their free time. 
They're very <laughs> smart. No, no softballs in the house today. No softballs? Uh, Senator, may I ask you, may I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. So I'm curious for, for um, what you're hearing back home. Uh, Oregon is a state that's out in front on a lot of clean energy policy, energy efficiency policy in particular. Uh, what's the reaction that you're hearing back home uh, about the rebate programs and tax incentives and things like that are, that are being rolled out by the agencies? My, my constituents feel so strongly about clean energy. When I'm home and I have town hall meetings in every county every year, people come up and say, yeah, heard about it, Ron. What's next? <laughs> and, you know, I have to kind of say this is the biggest investment in the history of our country in terms of climate change. And people sometimes say, yeah, well, finance committee, you're the head of the thing. What do you guys do? You guys make loans so I can buy a house? So there's a big disconnect in America, as you might guess, from how policy gets made in Washington. It's why I do all these town meetings. And I think it'd be fair to say the reaction after you get by the disbelief because most people say the Congress can't run a two-car parade, let alone do something like this, um, has been very positive. And we have companies making, you know, um, legacy-type projections in terms of batteries and stuff like that. We have, we have somebody in Clackamas County doing that that Alice and everybody talk about. Others? Yes? Can you wait for the microphone so the live cast can hear? We've been hearing a lot today about the challenges people are facing translating the language from the law and all the tax regulations to make it accessible to the people you're trying to get the money to. Yeah. Um, you know, can you comment? Is there any way we can have laws that, you know, people can understand? That is way too logical for the federal government. I spend a big chunk of my time on exactly what you're talking about. I made a commitment that had never been done in my state to have open to everybody town hall meetings in every county every year. I've now had about 1,050 of them. And the overwhelming bulk of the time in the meetings is devoted to exactly what you're talking about. So every time I have a chance to sit at my laptop or in the old days put a pencil to something, I'm thinking about you know, that. If we were starting over, a lot of the language that's there now wouldn't exist. What we're trying to do is make a transition and it's why when I walked in, how many of you out of curiosity had ever heard the new energy law explained like I've explained it? Raise your hand if you had. Did anybody here know about 10 years ago and technology neutrality and tax credits? One person? Somebody going like this. I find nobody's heard anything about that. They barely know that there's a new law. There's starting to be renewed interest on things like heat pumps, because you can look it up. It's at our website and others, and you can see savings that you can get. So we're spending a lot of time on this. If you got any ideas on how to better get the word out. There are a bunch of people, I think, fibbing when I ask my questions, because I find people in the energy field had no idea that this started in 2010, no idea about technological neutrality, no idea about tax credits, um, economic communities. People will know a tiny bit about direct pay. Do you all know about the direct pay features? Yep. How many people heard of the direct pay features? Okay, that's less than half the room. Direct pay was a hugely consequential matter because local governments obviously don't pay taxes in the kind of classic federal taxes. 
So we wanted to get help to them, and they're eligible for, quote, direct pay from the Treasury. So and we got a lot of explaining to do, and you can see it in this room of people who, you know, are willing to tackle bad weather, gazillion degree heat, come to Washington to listen to a whole bunch of Congress folks. Um, no, I'm a journalist. I spend my time explaining all this. Right. Who do you write for? Uh, RTO Insider. Where Wonderful. I, yep. Talk to Alice and Sydney, <laughs> and we, we would be happy to do it. I'm a journalist kid <laughs> and very proud of my nonfiction writing dad. One of his best books was about the Bay of Pigs. And there's a picture of Fidel Castro on the back with my dad. And Castro says, Peter Wyden knows more about it than we do. So we're, we're journalists. We'd be glad to work with you. Yeah. Why don't we take one other and then I got a zip. Okay. More than, more than anything, we want you to know our door is open. I think it's wonderful to see a house full of young people. Because this is your time, folks. This is your opportunity. You said, you know, you want to see a transition from complicated lingo? This is about clean energy, clean transportation, energy efficiency. If you remember one thing, that's the three things the bill does. Okay? To be continued. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Senator. Thank you so much.